Hey Vinyl community and all my music loving friends, it's been a couple of weeks, I'm running a little behind schedule with videos, so I thought it was time to throw something out there. Um, so I know the YouTuber put something out there uh, recently about compilations, uh, and I happen to have several in my collection, so I thought maybe I'd walk through a few of those, uh, explain some of them, the significance I guess to some of them uh, when I bought them, and uh, yeah, so without further ado, uh, we'll move right into it. So this is uh, basically highlights uh, over three years, uh, 1956, 1958, and 1963 performances culled from those three years at the Newport, Rhode Island Jazz Festival. Uh, this is a double album. Not sure the re this is a re-release, 1982 on CBS. Uh, nice gatefold sleeve, pictures of the various acts. Um, on this, uh, in particular, Miles Davis Quintet are on here. Uh, brilliant version of Bye Bye Blackbird, Louis Armstrong All-Stars, of course, uh, the standard uh, When the Saints Come Marching In, Thelonious Monk, a uh, song called Epistrophe, and of course, uh, my favorite, the Dave Brubeck uh, Quartet, the original lineup, of course, with Paul Desmond, uh, Joe Morello, Eugene Wright, and uh, of course, Dave Brubeck on piano. So yeah, this is a really nice collection. Um, of course, again, the nice gatefold. All the track listings and all the personnel, lots of good detail there. Again, I guess I call this a live compilation because that's what it is. Um, so yeah, Newport Jazz Festival highlights from 1956, 1958, and 1963. Uh, shifting gears to a little psychedelic 60s. Nuggets. Uh, the Nuggets series was a 12 uh, part, 12 album series. Uh, that started with this uh, volume one in 1985. It was on the Rhino Records label uh, out of the United States. You get stories of all the different bands on this one. Of course, um, there's the Electric Prunes. Uh, I had too much to dream last night. Uh, the Blues Magoos, we ain't got nothing yet. Of course, the uh, Psychotic Reaction by the Count Five, that's one of my favorites. Um, yeah, they're called Nuggets just because they're, I guess, gems, you know, from the period. And they, uh, again, over the 12 album series, they, they covered genres, garage, punk rock. Uh, this one's, you know, psych pop, I guess, if you will. Um, but yeah, Nuggets, volume one. Again, released 1985, or 84, rather. So, <laughs> slippery hands. Uh, yeah, on the Rhino record label. We're seeking out, again, I only have um, the first one. Apparently, these are quite valuable. Now, I bought this when it came out in 85 when I was in high school. Um, again, I don't have any of the others. Um, but uh, if I see them, I would be interested in picking them up. I mean, it's just, uh, before there was streaming, uh, you had to have a compilation album, you know, if you, like a good mixtape. Uh, that's what a good compilation album did. It gave you a variety. Uh, typically, uh, a compilation would feature similar artists to keep the flow, and that's what this does here. Nuggets, volume one. And speaking of record labels, um, labels would often do this. They would uh, put out a compilation to feature their, their current artists uh, who were uh, active at the time. Uh, this is the London record, London record label out of the UK. Uh, this was 1985 release. And you can see here uh, an album for the price of a seven inch single. And there's a bunch of the artists featured on here from the time, of course, Bronski Beat, Blamange, uh, Bananarama, um, yeah, the, the King Gang. Um, so on the inside, of course, what they do, they, you know, pictures of the band, trying to encourage you basically, hey, you like this song, go buy the album by this particular band and uh, you'll love it even more. So these were kind of lost leaders for the record label. Uh, not a big profit center for them, just more uh, to create awareness uh, to people out there hitting the record shops and saying, hey, maybe you haven't heard this, uh, give it a go. So uh, yeah, there they are. Yeah, the covers of the albums, Blumage. I, I actually have uh, a lot of this stuff, Age of Consent, uh, Bronski Beat, I have that album. I have both of these Blumage albums. Of course, Bananarama, uh, they were terrific. Anyway, yeah, so there you have it. The London Sampler, 1985. Another label uh, out of England, the Vertigo label. Um, and they, I believe, distributed 4AD and Beggar's Banquet. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how all that supply chain worked, but uh, this is basically two albums. And at the time, I remember it was four or five bucks. And it's just really great. You can see uh, some of the artists on here. I mean, um, 
at the time. So Big Country, uh, there's a really, really good uh, live version of In a Big Country on here. Of course, that was their biggest hit, featuring the vocals of the late, great Stu uh, Stuart Adamson, uh, who left us too early. Of course, Cocteau Twins, they were on the 4AD label. There's two songs on here, Ivo and Lorelei. Uh, this Mortal Coil, also on the 4AD label. I mean, this is a lot of bang for the buck. Um, of course, it comes with this. Again, just like the London sampler, you know, here's, here's, if you want to seek out these artists, here's all these, uh, the albums that these songs on the compilation were culled from. Um, so if there's any doubt in your mind, uh, then of course there's, you know, Big Country, The Crossing. Uh, I have that uh, as well. I have a bunch of this stuff. There's Boomtown Rats and The Long Grass. That's a really great album. Um, of course on this, uh, uh, yeah, they even throw in a Dire Straits song because I guess they were on the Vertical vertical label. It doesn't really fit with this compilation because this is mostly new wave, uh, sort of alternative pop artists at the time, Love and Rockets as well. So again, the Vertigo sampler, uh, a double album uh, for actually less than the price of a regular studio album at the time. I remember again, four or five bucks uh, when this came out and uh, it's a really good collection. Uh, another one I should note here recently, uh, I was in the grocery store. It's a true telling of how old you are when you hear music on the PA system in the supermarket from uh, when you're in high school, but I heard ABC, uh, this song, Be Near Me, actually, this just this past Thursday when I was grocery shopping, and uh, you know, it's aged surprisingly well. Um, the lead vocalist, his name escapes me, but I have that, that album, their first one, Lexicon of Love, and uh, his vocals are kind of that new romantic sound like Brian Ferry, and uh, again, it's aged surprisingly well, and I gave that a spin. Uh, last night so uh, seek that out ABC lexicon of love if you do like the uh, synth pop of the 80s uh, that's definitely a keeper again the vertigo sampler uh, 1985 uh, moving on to 1988 this is electronic body music uh, this was on the play it again Sam record label out of Belgium uh, a lot of the artists on here were kind of like a uh, the new industrial I don't know, industrial dance, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, of course, bands like Front 242. I saw them at Lollapalooza, um, 92 or 93, I can't even remember, so long ago. Uh, Click Click, Cassandra Complex, um, a Split Second, Chris and Cozy. I have a bunch of 12-inch singles, uh, extended versions of a lot of this stuff. I was a big fan of the Play It Again Sam record label at the time when I was uh, way at university. If you went to any alternative clubs uh, at the time, uh, you'd, you'd hear some of these ar these artists. Uh, yeah, there's really yeah. Again, they would feature the artwork, you know, and the band logos. You know, of course, there's Skinny Puppy. I mentioned them in in my uh, video I did recently on uh, high value and low value records. Uh, this stuff uh, has really gone up in value. I was pretty excited to see that. Um, but yeah, this is pretty pretty nice packaging. And again, at the time uh, when this came out in '88. Uh, 89 um, a lot of bang for the buck I didn't pay much for this at all um, and it's still in great condition so this is uh, an interesting compilation uh, it's called till things get brighter um, this is all Johnny Cash covers and this came out in uh, let's see you're on this 1988 there's the man in black himself um, I believe that's uh, Buck Hogarth right there who helped put this project together um, it was all different artists in the, uh, of that period doing Johnny's tunes. Um, people like Mark Allman, the Mekons are on here, Michelle Shocked, um, Mark Riley. Um, there's the track listing right there. You can see they're all there. Those are, you know, some of Johnny Cash's biggest hits, of course. The significance of this is it's just not a, an album uh, of covers. Um, Johnny Cash was a pretty progressive guy and he got on board with this. Uh, AIDS was a, a really uh, a huge crisis at the time and a growing crisis um, in the world and uh, all the proceeds from this record went to AIDS research so that's notable. Till things get bright, uh, till things are brighter rather. Uh, I bought this again when it came out. Um, I didn't know much about Johnny Cash at the time. Uh, I'll claim ignorance. I was probably 20 years old. I wasn't really into vintage country as I am now. Um, but yeah, this was a good introduction to uh, some of his bigger hits and some people uh, giving their own spin to those hits. As I said, they're all covers. Uh, Till Things Are Brighter. Really good. And yeah, and the fact that it was a charity thing, I, I think that's pretty cool that Johnny Cash uh, did that. Alright, so going back to my youth youth, 
Uh, there's another guy, a uh, YouTuber, uh, I believe he calls himself 33 RPM. Forgive me if I'm getting that wrong. Uh, but he did a, a feature recently, a short video on the KTEL company. Uh, I didn't realize uh, they were actually from, uh, based out of Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada. I'm actually from Ontario originally, so I found that kind of amusing. Um, the, uh, the company was founded by a guy named Philip Kives, and he was kind of the, the first guy to do the infomercials late at night. Uh, and then discovered that, hey, um, there's a market for, uh, you know, these compilation records with you put 20, 20 songs on an album and sell it for four or five bucks. And it would get people, um, he'd get the rights to the songs. Of course, the labels are more than willing to get on board because it would encourage people to go out. Oh, there's that cheap trick, uh, Dream Police, I'm going to go buy that or, what, you know, whatever it might be. So when I was a kid, uh, and I'm talking, you know, nine, ten years old, these were a great deal. And in fact, here's one right here I still have from uh, my public school days. 22 explosive hits. Watch out, it's explosive. Um, this is uh, oh, it's a bunch of stuff from the time. This is came out in 72. I probably got this when I was in grade five or six. I used to get these uh, for Christmas from my parents at the time. Um, this features uh, everything on here from, good God, Olivia Newton-John, uh, the song... Uh, Popcorn by Hot Butter. That was that was pretty funny, amusing to me when I was a kid. Uh, James Brown even is on here, Honky Tonk Part One. Um, right up to Derek and the Dominoes, Layla. I mean, what are you gonna do? So it's explosive hits, you know, original hits, original stars. I guess true audiophiles really dislike these because um, when you took the original um, recordings and you slammed so many into the grooves, like ten songs aside, uh, it would compress them. But I'm not that much of a, I'll be honest with you, as, as far as audiophile stuff goes, um, I, I can't tell a whole, a whole lot of difference with that. If, if the record itself is in good condition and not all poppy and clean, um, it, it all it's all the same to me. But uh, again, I thought uh, this was pretty amusing. And then you can see the KTEL label up there. Uh, yeah, and you, they, they would TV advertisements for these all the time. You know, get to your local record store, and now it's 22 explosive hits, limited time. Well, I have it. For a limited time apparently and here's another one in the same vein uh, this was an American based company called Ronco and they actually did um, late night commercials too uh, for different products everything from souped up toaster ovens waffle irons you name it um, and of course records so this is uh, 20 do it now it's 20 giant hits of course as advertised on TV as I said before see all the artists here I mean you got everything from the Beatles Janis Joplin you know to the sappy stuff like BJ Thomas even Richie Havens is on here in Donovan I mean this is actually really good um, you know in the days before you made a mixed cassette tape which I made a ton for friends uh, back in the day um, you put this on and it's it, again it's like before streaming you had uh, just a compilation of, of current hits and you breeze through it yeah again there's 20, so 10 songs aside, so jam-packed fun here. And the year on this is uh, 1975, uh, and again, uh, yeah, Ronco, the equivalent to KTEL. Do it now. <laughs> All right. This is another one uh, I, was, I was quite happy with. I bought a collection from uh, a co-worker of mine back in Ontario before we moved to the States. He was just cleaning out his garage. and. Uh, I probably got 50 or 60 albums from them. I, I sold probably half of them. I've still got half of them um, in my collection. This is uh, a double on the Sire record label. Let's see Union Jack there. It's called The History of British Rock, of course. And it's a double record set. You can see the artists all listed there. So, of course, everything from uh, a version of Black Magic Woman, Fleetwood Mac, that's with, with Peter Green. Um, Manford Man, Do Wah Diddy Diddy, Sunshine of Your Love, Cream, um, Status Quo, Pictures of Matchstick Men. Um, before Status Quo really started rocking out um, and changed their their sound completely after that original uh, hit they had. Uh, but yeah, this is this is really good. And uh, unfortunately, blank. There's really nothing on the inside um, to uh, you know show the artists like I I've shown in the past examples. But of course, there you can see the. Sorry for the glare out the uh, sun coming in there. There's a Sire record label right there. So yeah, uh, the history history of British rock. So it encompasses probably a, about a 10 year period there from um, late 60s into the uh, mid to late 70s. Uh, shifting gears back, um, this is about 1985. 
little punk rock action here. Uh, it came from the pit. Uh, this is on the Psych Records label uh, out, of, out of Montreal. Uh, and they did, you know, a lot of the uh, up and coming punk rock uh, artists at the time. Uh, this one featuring uh, a lot of bands uh, across Canada, actually. Uh, there's a SNFU, they were from Edmonton uh, doing a version of uh, Linda Ronstadt's uh, Poor Pitiful Me. Look that up, it's on YouTube. It's, it's really great, a lot of fun. Uh, sudden Impact, those guys were from Toronto. I had a couple of their cassettes, and I remember a buddy of mine, Paul, he had he had a bunch of their stuff on vinyl too. Uh, of course, No Means No, uh, they're on here. October Crisis, they were from Montreal. Gas and Hour, um, yeah, and Problem Children. They were another good band. Yeah, it came from the pit, and of course, uh, inside, of course, way pre-internet, you could it was a mailing list of all where you could contact any of these bands try to get them you know you could book them for uh you know shows or, or whatever it might be just all the contact information of course you know you could see us in a few there they are in edmonton alberta um yeah sudden impact i said that from toronto they're actually from newmarket that's just a suburb on the north side of toronto it came from the pit a lot of fun here i might actually listen to this later very high energy uh, of course, this is from my high school years, and it's uh, it's in great shape. And uh, yeah, I really like it. Um, gonna check it out and see what that that's worth on Discogs. I think it's got to be worth a few bucks if it's in good shape. Again, on the Psych Records label, I think it's now defunct. Um, it's gone. And where are we going now? So this is not this is sort of a compilation. Uh, it was a bunch of artists getting together, um, united uh, against apartheid. Uh, of course, this was led by uh, uh, it's the great Steve, uh, little Steven, and the producer Arthur Baker. Featured a whole bunch of artists on here. You can see here, um, of course, Africa Bambata, Herbie Hancock, the jazz legends on here, Clarence Clemens from the E Street Band, uh, sax player, Pat Benatar, Bono, Stip Bader from Lords of the New Church. I mean, across a, a, a range uh, of styles, uh, musical styles but united in a common cause against apartheid. And of course, um, they did this. It was kind of like a, uh, you know, kind of a, like a live aid thing, but um, yeah, in that, in that sort of vein uh, for a cause. And of course, the big single from this is called uh, Ink, uh, Sun City, Ink in a Play, Sun City. Uh, really good song, look it up. Sun City. Artists united against apartheid. Really cool cover with the barbed wire through the sun. Very powerful. Uh, this is pretty unique. Uh, this one I found probably about a year ago at a local shop here. Wondered what it was. It was a kind of a curious cover. Sounds of Solid Country. Uh, long list of artists on here. On here, it's a six-record set, and I got it for under ten bucks. Everything, the total mint condition. Uh, and then when I got it home, uh, I realized what it was. It's actually, you can see here. It's actually produced, I hope you can see that, um, by the United States Marine Corps. And what this ha what this uh, encompasses, as you can see, there's the label. Um, so what they did, um, there's actually a DJ, so when you play it through, there's four or five songs aside. Um, you know, of course, everything from George Jones, Merle Haggard, because it was mid, this is mid 60s to mid 70s basically. It covers like a 10 year period. Jerry Reed, Jim Reeves, Charlie Rich, Marty Robbins, uh, Hank Thompson, Porter Wagner. Uh, they're all on here. But I, I, th I thought it was pretty cool uh, in that you have a DJ. So in between each song, you'd have this guy come on, like with a, he's got the smooth radio voice, and he'd say a couple of shout outs to the Marine Corps, uh, thanking them for their service, and also talk about the artists. And I, they must have, I, I've done, tried to do more research on this and, you know, the purpose of these. I think I can only conclude that they were played maybe on closed circuit on military bases around the world for uh, the troops, um, you know, to keep them in, um, in tune with what was going on uh, in music back in the United States. So, uh, yeah, I was pretty pleased to find this very unique set. Again, it's in this box. The box is pretty beat up, but uh, it's a six record set. And... Uh, yeah, I really, I think it's really neat and very unique. Clearly, whoever owned this was probably in the service. Uh, those wouldn't, that wouldn't have been for sale to uh, the general public. I'm certain of that. 
And lastly, uh, I thought I'd grab a couple of CDs. I'm playing this one in the background right now, actually. Uh, there was a label out of Toronto called SPG. This is called Hardest Hits Volume 2. And of course, here's uh, Volume 3. I do have Volume 1 somewhere. I must have misfiled it. I couldn't find it. Um, but this label, uh, again, out of Toronto, SPG, uh, they would uh, basically reissue uh, like co like a compilation no different than a KTEL kind of thing in, in some ways that uh, just create awareness with current artists um, with a focus on some uni uh, unique Canadian talent as well on these like for example on volume two here uh, Boys Brigade, Passion of Love, that was a pretty big alternative you know, alternative pop hit they were from Toronto uh, at the time um, of course Pig Bag, Papa's got a brand new Pig Bag that was the theme song for uh, the new music uh, which was a show on uh, Toronto um, independent television channel, uh, City TV at the time. Uh, I used to watch new music a lot. It was, I think it was on late nights on either Friday night or Saturday night, I can't remember. And they'd play music videos. This is in 1984, 85 of uh, current artists. Now these collections both came out um, again in 1992. So at the time when I bought these, I was kind of revisiting the 80s, thinking it was a long time ago. Little did I know I'd be talking about these in 2021. Um, but yeah, this one, uh, in Volume 3, there's Swamp Thing by the Chameleons. Of course, I'm a huge fan of those, uh, those guys, as anybody who's watched any of my other videos knows. Um, Baby Judy by the Hawaiian Pups, that's a really fun song, look that up, you'll, you'll dig it. If you like synth pop, uh, from the 80s, Fiction Factory, Feels Like Heaven, that's a great song. If you've ever seen a John Hughes movie, uh, these are worth getting, and they're available uh, through Discogs. I, I was just curious, and I looked, and people uh, are still buying them, um, old copies of them. Uh, back to uh, an album collection of cover versions, um, kind of like that Johnny Cash uh, thing I mentioned earlier, Till Things Are Brighter. This was not for charity, though. This was uh, on the A&M Records. Um, it was all covers of the Carpenter songs, um, as everybody knows. Sadly, Karen Carpenter died at a very young age, and her brother Richard still survives. Um, but yeah, this was a bunch of artists at the time. This is uh, released in 1994, again on A&M. Uh, Cheryl Crow doing Solitaire. Uh, Matthew Sweet, Let Me Be The One. Uh, what else? Is it? Yeah, well, the highlight for me is the Japanese outfit, Shonen Knife, uh, doing Top of the World. Definitely look that up. It's hilarious. It's a great video. They're fun, they're like a power pop trio, uh, female uh, from uh, Japan. Yeah, Shonen Knife, Top of the World. That's a really excellent, fun song. Get the party going, if you will. So that's kind of uh, all I've got for compilations today. I'm trying to keep my videos around 20 minutes. I see them coming in around 23 today. So uh, that's the whole goal. Keep your interest and uh, turn you on to some old stuff. Um, predominantly, I have a lot of older material. I don't buy a lot of new vinyl. Um, it's part of the hunt for me. So anyway, I hope everybody's having a, a great week, getting vaccinated. Uh, I'm all done with that, uh, so ready to move on and get to a concert, maybe a sporting event this summer, and maybe even get back to Canada and see some family. So uh, things are looking positive, people. So get vaccinated and um, enjoy this great weather. It's a beautiful day in suburban Boston. I plan on getting out, uh, going out. I already went out for a run this morning. It's beautiful here. So anyway, I'll see you guys all again soon.